July 9th, 2015, now open. We'll start off with the public session, but there is no public here, so we'll stick on to that. Uh, the approval of the minutes from the June 18th meeting, is everybody read them? Anybody have a no motion on that? Bush room accepted the minutes. Second. Okay, any comments, changes, or problems with the minutes? None, and we'll have a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone hot in favor, say no. Okay, I'd like to move up the uh, election of officers to the next item. As you know, in the last, uh, we should have done this in June, but uh, I kind of messed up on that one. At any rate, uh, we looked, we polled the existing officers, uh, Maureen, Michael, and myself, all uh, indicated they would run for office again. I'm open for our nominations from the floor. For anyone who'd like to like to nominate someone or nominate yourself, if you'd like to take one of these offices. No nominations? Okay, then we have uh, Robert Montague for chair, Michael Hearn <coughs> for vice chair, and Maureen Sinkowitz for secretary treasurer. Uh, for Robert Montague, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? No. Michael Hearn, Jr. All those in favor? Aye. Passed. Anyone dissenting? No. Maureen Sinkowitz, Secretary Treasurer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone not there? We need to take nominations. We did. Today. I just announced nominations okay. from the floor and they didn't. They, they kept very quiet. Nobody was. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just yeah. wanted to keep it. Silence was Correct. considered to be an answer. <laughs> Okay, and, and the result of the election is then that uh, the current board uh, chair, vice chair, and secretary treasurer will stay as they were. Well, thank you all. <laughs> yeah, thank you, and uh, I'm not sure that thank you or not, but it's, it's fun now. Next year I'll get it right, and I'll do, we'll do this in May and then have the election in June as we're supposed to. Okay, uh, Cindy is not here yet, so why don't we push up to the finances? And we'll do those first. Um, these are past, did everybody get it? There were two sheets that I got passed around. I got one. They're coming oh, around. One's finances, one's an announcement oh, okay. about Medicare. Did you get stuck somewhere? In here, they got Margaret's. Yeah, they did. I didn't know they were here. I wasn't looking and nobody told me. That's all right. That's all right. We're writing something out. So um, FY15 budget year ended as of June 30th, and as of July 1st, it's FY16 budget year. So um, with our salaries, um, because we have our own um, funds that we have to come up with to supplement our budget, um, I already transferred um, uh, money from the Department of Elder Affairs formula grant and then some funds from um, other accounts to pay for personal personnel services but we still will owe more money I this is the last pay period for FY15 so when I find out um, after this payroll what we owe it's probably around $20,000 still that we're going to owe for personnel so that will get transferred from one of our revolving accounts. Um, and then um, it, as soon as the this is all finished, meaning FY15, and then we have FY16, and I can give you a sheet that will show um, everything from the beginning, what we were appropriated, and then what's spent, and you'll get these every single week. So again, our budget, you know, we provided uh, what the mayor had requested, level services, um, which means that our, you know, we couldn't add anything big in there or new uh, additional personnel, but we can, add, you know, we add new programs all the time. It's just that if we add a program, it's going to have to come from, um, you know, one of our accounts, not from the city appropriation. So um, 
other than pay increases. That's all that FY16 budget brought in um, for additional funding from the city. So, um, so that's for both the FY15 and FY16 budget. So we're happy to be part of the city budget process and as a city department. Okay. And you have an announcement? Well, that's like yeah, that is Oh, okay, let's well, go to uh, the staff report. Cynthia Torrell. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, Cynthia. So let me just say, Cynthia is the benefits council manager. Okay. So the last time I came before you, we talked about the beginnings of implementing the new benefits counseling program that we're running in the Highland Valley Elder Services catchment area. The progress we have made is that we now have about um, I think it's 18 to 20 volunteers who would like to be trained, including current senior center volunteers and new volunteers that we have interviewed or are finishing interviewing. We're orienting them this month and next month. We have two sessions. Um, they can pick one. We'll go over the basics of what it means to be a benefits counselor. And then after they go through that orientation, having gone through our interview, they can make a decision as to whether they'd like to commit to a year of training, mentoring, counseling. They will be shadowing experienced benefits counselors. They will be having training from a number of agencies that are committing to visit with us directly to do training, including Community Action and others. Um, and then we are also offering training to these volunteers uh, directly from our very experienced staff like Crystal. Um, the counseling will be, it has already begun in a small way, but it will begin mostly in September when people are engaging in um, they're recertifying for fuel assistance beginning in August. Um, they'll be interacting with the SHINE program during the open enrollment period for health insurance. They'll be uh, invited to sign up for fuel assistance November 1st, so it's a good time of year to start. We're engaged in marketing the program um, through print ads, radio marketing, so that we can target both potential volunteers as well as clients. And we've gotten a lot of calls and emails from people who want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, we've met with the councils on aging in the other uh, towns in our region. Some of them are interested in having us train their staff who are outreach coordinators and um, other staff and volunteers. And some of them are interested in having us come sit at their senior center for some of the time to counsel people. And others feel all set for now, possibly, in terms of that, but they're still sending their outreach coordinator to us. So we'll have a back and forth between us and other councils and on aging, make sure everybody's educated about the benefits people can apply for. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Are there any questions for Cynthia? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's move on to the director's report. Okay. Um, on Tuesday, July 21st, I'll be going to the Transportation and Parking Committee to um, discuss further about the handicapped spots that we are requesting out there. And today, uh, David Pomerantz, Central Services Director, came to take um, some photographs of the area that I'm referring to. So um, we'll see what ends up after that meeting for additional handicap parking. And you know, talking to a number of seniors, um, or sometimes they're talking to me about um, the distance that they have to walk, even with a placard or a license plate that would allow them to be in handicap parking. I mean, we have four, and it's again just not enough. And I'm sure you all are very well aware of that, um, that we are a, a location that would warrant more handicapped parking. How come it wasn't planned in advance? Um, four were all that were required for our building. Yeah. 
And so, I mean, I guess in the bigger picture of things, to say, oh, this is a senior center, we're going to have a lot of um, individuals coming here either as our participants or to be using the building for whatever purpose, that most likely they would, just because of who we are as a facility, that more handicap parking would be needed. And it's probably something that really should have gotten done years ago because it's been a real continuous problem. And I should say a, a, a situation, um, because people do end up finding parking is just very difficult, especially you know, people who have breathing issues or um, you know, are using a walker and they're coming from behind Walter Salvo, so it's difficult. Um, so it, it is being taken care of. And, and hopefully we end up with more handicapped parking. On uh, June 30th, we had uh, a change of pace here, meaning we had our birthday celebration, and those who were 90 or older were invited to this um, celebration. <clears throat> there were 55 in attendance, and two of them were um, individuals over 102. Oh, so wow. I think that's a fantastic wow. one that they chose to come and that they're over. Hundred, they were. That's they terrific. Go, yeah. um, and you know, we're finding how helpful it is when an outside group um, wants to assist in some way. And we've been very fortunate that um, Calvin Coolidge um, Nursing and Rehab Center has been very active in providing something for a program, and they provided the um, cakes mm -hmm. for um, this event, which was nice and. Um, you know, it, it, an event like this takes a lot of preparation and a lot of work by many people. Mm -hmm. And John Kaczynski and Barbara Kaczynski are the ones who manage the kitchen because we did all of our own food here. Um, and uh, all the staff assisted and were very enthusiastic in <clears throat> making sure that everybody had a great time. Um, and the mayor attended and um, with Heather coordinated the event and did an excellent job with um, both the mayor and, and Heather saying happy birthday. And that's kind of a traditional thing that we've been doing since way back when Claire Higgins um, was mayor to sing happy birthday. So it's <laughs> somewhat special to have a, a mayor participate and be part of the celebration. And um, just to sort of backtrack, and I know at the last meeting I had said this, is we used to do the party in the park. Um, and it was a celebration of those um, turning 100. Uh, and last year we held that event here. And now we've kind of split the event into two different things. One is a birthday celebration. And then we have a, a picnic, cookout, barbecue, whatever you want to call it. So now each year it will be a birthday celebration for those turning 90 and older. And then we'll have a, uh, this year we're calling it our annual cookout, which will be held here. And, um, you know, that'll be hamburgers and hot dogs and salads and things like that. <clears throat> so we, again, evaluated programs to see where they're, you know, what works and what doesn't work and what's needed and what's not needed. So um, the uh, summer uh, cookout will be in August. Uh, and hopefully you all want to come. You don't have a definite date? Yeah, we do have a definite date, and um, it's the, August 12th. It's August 12th, everyone, 11.30. So you'll hear tickets will be on sale soon. And this is an event, the cookout is just for Northampton seniors. Um, there are just a few things here that are specifically for Northampton seniors only. Um, we're having another shred day. We try to have two of those each year. And the next one will be September 12th, 9 to 12. We're very fortunate that um, Valley Green Shredding does this at no cost to us. And it's one way that we can um, raise some funds for our programs here. Each year, um, farmer market coupons, which we receive from Highland Valley Elder Services, they're a federally funded program, uh, these farmer market coupons. And so we never know when we're going to get them during the summer or how many we're going to get. But, you know, it's kind of like the time now that uh, farmer market coupons are available. 
And so anybody in the listening audience, uh, if you are interested in farmer market coupons, you have to um, be income eligible, but you would apply down here. Um, it'll be by lottery because we usually have far more people apply than we have uh, farmer market coupons for. But it's always worth putting your name in and hopefully it will get selected. Um, so we're taking names now. So anybody interested in farmer market coupons, please come on down and get that. Um, we also have uh, farm shares from Grow Food Northampton. And this year we actually have 55 farm shares, which is an extraordinary large amount. Um, very, very generous of uh, Grow Food Northampton. Each share is uh, valued at $100. Um, and what a senior needs to pay, and again, this is income eligible as well, is $10 for that $100 farm share. So for the whole summer, they'll be getting fresh produce. We have the first one this, this week. Um, so people come in and pick up their, uh, their bags of wonderful fresh produce, vegetables. And uh, both of those programs that I mentioned, the farm share and also the farmer market coupons, we do buy lottery because there are so many people who, um, who want to participate in it. How many people do you believe don't get it out of the lottery? How many people don't get picked? How many? Um, well, what was nice this year with farm share, um, with the number of people who did get selected, and I don't have an exact number, the um, farm share provided us to cover all of those people. So I, I thought that was... So it was honestly. hundreds of people then? No, no. You know, it could have been um, seven or eight. Okay. But we really um, have been making an effort to do a lot of outreach, outreach to people to apply for any of these kind of programs, like the Deals and Steals, Nutrition Outreach, the Farmer Market Coupons, so that it's, it's not just like a, you know, a small group who know about it. Um, because there are people all over this uh, city that can benefit from additional nutrition programs. Um, we had received um, through Elder Vision Inc. a grant from Highland Valley Elder Services um, to uh, sponsor LGBT elder programming. And on Wednesday, July 15th, from 6.30 to 8, there's going to be a programming um, informational session here to get ideas about what um, kind of programs or support groups or whatever uh, everybody may come up with. So that's that's going to be happening. And there'll be different events held here. Um, Amherst Senior Center, East Hampton Senior Center, and Williamsburg Senior Center are all part of um, a, a collaboration with this um, LGBT grant. So we, we are the host community for the grant. Um, and that's, I mean, that, that's pretty much what I have, um, you know, there's other programs that will be starting um, September going through December, um, which, you know, you'll all find out about some challenging programs, fun programs, some existing programs that will just keep continuing because of their popularity. And need. What's that? And probably need. Yeah. And need, yeah. Yeah, always looking at what the unmet need is, which is always far reaching. Okay. Heather, Heather is doing a tremendous job in working on getting new programs. Mm -hmm. She's really, really yeah. outstanding. I will say that, that Heather is doing an outstanding mm -hmm. job as program coordinator. And, you know, I think that we have an excellent staff here. Uh, everybody works as a, a, a team. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the purpose is to fulfill our mission. And I think that's being done very well by our board as well and all of our volunteers because we couldn't do it without everybody you know i think there's just so many things that are going on here that you need uh, a wealth of <coughs> knowledge and um, it's, it's, hands to get it's it done. also a lot when you have so much going on to coordinate and get everything kind of be able to fit together you know, any other questions for the mm -hmm. no we'll go on to the uh, building and grounds report Yes, um, so you've noticed we have a lot of um, wonderful flowers out there now. Um, we thank uh, Mike and Pat who have always put flowers out there for us and with uh, Bob Griffin who has been doing our gardening out there 
he put in a lot of perennials, so now those just automatically come up each year, unless there's some winter kill. Uh, but it's it's nice to see all of the, the colors out there. So we've been fortunate to have volunteers like the Ahrens and Bob to be doing this for us. Um, and um, the air conditioning has been working well. So we're happy with that. The building is getting utilized both by our programming. Uh, this week we have Paint Box Theater here, uh, which brings in a lot of adults, grandparents, and children. Um, and they're great customers for other things in the building. And, mm -hmm. and it just adds a little vitality. Again, it puts some stress on our parking, but it's good having them here. And it is also uh, a rental, so it does help with our budget. Pretty, um, I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, pretty soon we're going to be talking about snow plowing. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't take that in the notes, please. We don't want to see that. Uh, any other questions you have on building the grounds? Okay, let's uh, move on to old business. Update on kick tires. Yep. Well, that campaign's still going on. Um, so we have one van that's going to be purchased through the capital improvements. So you know, I think, or we all should be thanking the city for um, approving that as a purchase, and then um, our own kick the tire campaign. Excuse me. Um, currently, we have fifty-eight thousand nine hundred and ninety-one dollars and eighty cents. So that only increased about fifty-five dollars since the last time. Um, so we're short a little over six thousand dollars, but and I've said this before. Hopefully, by purchasing two vans, we're going to be, you know, that yeah. sixty-five was an estimated cost, and that was based on looking at um, other vans. So you know, I think we're going to do okay with what we have in our gift account. So we'll be getting two vans. I was given uh, information. Um, from a state bid list for Plymouth County, where you know we can look at vans, um, and Central Services hopefully will be assisting with me um, to select the correct kind of vans that we need um, with lifts. We so can't do business locally. You have to use you, you, if, if there's a state contract, because yeah. we have to go out to bid. So if there's a state contract you're already going on a bid list. Yeah, yeah I, I mis understand that. If this was not being purchased by the city, um, and it was being purchased by the Friends Group, then it would be a different story. We could go anywhere we wanted. Which is what happened in East Hampton. Yeah. The Friends Group over there is what caught the right. Yeah, yeah. So they were able to do whatever they wanted. Right. And that's why you can say on the van, East Hampton Savings Bank, I believe, is what's yeah. on their van. Yeah. yeah. They then, then donated the van to the council after the fact. Oh, and I should mention too that you know our old van. Hopefully, we get some money for that. Yeah. But it would be sold by the city, and that money goes into the general fund. And then I would request city council for that money, and they could say yes or no. Um, so but we can't I, put it to the new van. Well, I mean, that's what I'm hoping that we yeah. could. You know, sort of reimburse our account if we get that if that money comes in. So, so if we take any money out of any other account to make up for it, we can put it back in. Mm -hmm. the yeah. 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 So it'll be great having a mm, transportation program, which um, the the basic idea to start with is bringing people to and from the senior center, so that they can take the opportunity to be in programs services, they might come down for their brown bag, they might be here for the foot clinic. Would you go back to the uh, L, uh, the uh, low vision group being brought in? Yeah, the low vision group would be one of the groups, yeah. 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 And then gradually we'll see how that all works and keep building it up. And a possibility later of uh, a grocery or something of yeah. that type. Yeah, yeah. You know, like looking at it for maybe one day a week, one of the dance is just mm -hmm. strictly for grocery shopping. With two, you'd have more flexibility. That's true. If we didn't have the four, it was an old man, which we didn't want to drive too much. 
So that will help you as you were worried about driving. It'll be much better. I'm looking forward to driving. Okay, thank you, Matt. Okay, uh, any questions on the kitchen tires? And Senior Center Bank, yeah, is that covered? Yeah, I agree. Anything other? Ready? No, I Okay, we we'll want a new business, the Room Reuse Committee. Right, I, I left this under new business because um, what has been decided for sure is that the bathroom will be the fitness center, um, which means that that fitness equipment would get moved into the back room. Um, an area would be in there for warming up we won't see people on the floor in the lobby uh, or in the entranceways or you know against walls um, and they can do it more comfortably in an area and people around them can feel more comfortable that they're not watching somebody doing what they're doing and wondering what are they doing so um, and then the idea is to purchase um, some additional fitness equipment which would be paid through the gift account so you say, and I may have missed this, warming up, what do you mean in terms of like the winter? A warm, a warm up before you start exercising oh. on the machine. Oh. 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 Yeah. If, if you use the coffee shop a lot, you will see people in the, uh, the entrance way and Anthony's in there getting them warmed up and doing exercises before they start exercising yeah. so you don't purchase them. The, uh, and that back room, they're hoping you'll have a, like a wrestling mat area where okay. you can do that sort of thing. Um, I thought people were coming in the winter. I don't yeah. remember all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see you're not a fitness center buff because yeah. they would know the warm up. Yeah, I don't go to that. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you did, you'd know the term. Well, well they, on warm. another note, though, we are sometimes a warming center. I know. In the winter, so yeah. And a cooling center in the summer. Yeah. You know, if the mayor yeah. declares it. But we do encourage seniors to come here yeah. if they need air conditioning right. or in the winter they need to be warm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with the re reuse and fitness center down there, um, I would um, request that the board take a vote that they are in um, approval of the change that the fitness center is now going to be moved to the back room. Would anybody like to make a motion? I make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, the motion made to approve the moving of the fitness center from the front of the building to the back room. All those in favor? Right. All those against? No one against. It passed. And so what will happen? Barbara made the motion and it was seconded by Jim. Jim. Yeah. Um, so now what the fit old fitness center would become is um, probably like a multi-purpose room. So bingo would happen in there, the men's support group would happen in there, other support groups, those kinds of things would happen in there. and. Um, so our largest room will continue to be the great room, and then sort of the overflow room would be that room um, where the fitness center is All of things you've been was. doing in the back room, you can do in there. Right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Except yeah. for the brown bag, which is working very well in the uh, In the great, great room, room. Yeah. yeah. So there might be some working around, you know, mm -hmm. some of the bigger programs in the great room versus bigger programs we put on in the great room or rentals in the great room. So it's gonna just, Take a little more scheduling. And we're still time. using part of the library for some meetings. I see the board. That, yeah, and that will change once we. Uh, well, this is the reading. Of, was it Jim? The reading. That's the readers, readers and thinkers, and thinkers are in there today. Yeah. yeah. Which may not be a bad idea for the library. Well, I, I will say that there have been complaints that people yeah. can't go in and get books. You can't get in. The, yeah. Oh. It's good that they're so, not there. In one way, it's great having yeah. a table and other things in there. And then it's not so great because people who come in here to take out books can't. Yeah, the reason I think is I wouldn't think would be a, something they wouldn't mind somebody else no, being I in the room with them. Would be a it's a I would think that would be a problem. Draw the blind the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's. And I mean, it was going to work the what way they used to work. About? My goodness. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, well, yeah. there's a meeting in there. I'm not going to say, it, but they they close the blinds and close the door and put a sign. 
people can become emotional or yeah. um, <laughs> don't want to yeah, it's don't want to nice. be viewed. And and you know again the whole purpose of how that lobby set up is so that you can be at the reception desk yes. and you can look in to sort of monitor yeah. Yeah. as well as having all this light come into the lobby from yeah. you know oh, the outside. Right. Right side it was the purpose of the design in the first place also so all the what's going on in each one of these rooms can be viewed from the outside Sorry. without having to interfere with them to go in and see what's going on. And if there are people who don't like being viewed, maybe That's so a little too sensitive. Yeah. So I think that a lot of things that we've had in the, you know, since we made that a, a meeting room as well, a multi-purpose room and library, that, that that stuff can happen in the um, other room. But readers and thinkers, for instance, um, were here on, are here on Thursday, and it's always the second. Um, when we meet. So yep. sometimes they're in the um, great room, sometimes they're in the bistro. It's like, you know, some of the program people are in different places each week just because of what yeah. scheduling yeah. is about. Yep. But, yeah. you know, I say, here, we have a room for you at least. Mm -hmm. And that'd be something I think would go with the theme of the life, having yeah, well, that, that, that particular, particular meeting. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. But the whole purpose, initially it was the library is the library and there's no programming in there. That changed when we were going to lose a space and we needed to figure out how all this could still work. And so we've left it that way and, you know, that's still under consideration. Yeah, but it can be moderated yeah. so that it works for some things, not all things. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Anything more on that reuse? I think that's pretty much it if that other things come up. I mean, other than in the um, games room, looking to have a small partition put between the tables and the pool table so that people aren't sitting at a table playing cards and getting hit in the head of the pool. Thank you. So, you know, there's some um, <laughs> intentional or unintentional oh. Oh. That, that comes under safety. That comes under yeah. safety rules. So if there's kind of a partition, it blocks the kind of areas that <laughs> So yeah, many no, players no, objected no, to the yeah. it, it'll card players it, yeah. making noises while they were playing pool. So. Well, pool <laughs> players making noises while people well, yeah, were playing pool. Oh, so, yeah. We all have to work together. Yes, yeah, yeah, we have to remember the pool players are armed, so you have to be careful. Right. <laughs> yeah. They put the petition up. Anything else? No, that's all I have. Any questions on anything? Yeah. Suggestions? I don't have a question, but I just want to say that I went to this past month, the uh, seminar put on by the public health nurse, Dr. Strokes, mm -hmm. and it was really good, super Great. informative. Great. And I guess there's another one, July 15th, on a Wednesday, she's doing a recap of what she did about heart attacks yeah. and strokes, because people missed either one of them. Yeah. So she's going to do a recap of both of them. And it was, for somebody like me, it was really informative. You know, it was really, good, really. She did a, a very good job. Whereabouts? She, she had the in the bathroom at the time. What day was that? What do you mean? Wednesday, July fifteenth. Okay, thank you. Here. Uh, and, you know, as a presenter, she was excellent. Great. She yeah. had handouts. She had material. Yeah, too, right. She had a PowerPoint presentation. Right. Plenty of time for questions and answers. No one felt intimidated or anything like that. It was just so neat. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Here. So, <laughs> I'm so the public health nurse is Lisa Steinbach, and she is assigned to the senior center a couple times each month. Um, so she not only will you know do somebody's blood pressure or talk to them one on one, but she also does presentations similar to what John had talked about. So she's a great asset for us to have. And she um, had, okay. she handed out a card. So I was there. Yeah, any questions on anything, no matter what she present or mm -hmm. something that occurs in your life or something, don't hesitate to give her a call. Mm -hmm. so I'll be glad to help you out, steer you right direct, right. give you a suggestion or whatever. It was yeah. very reassuring. Would you go? Are you going to the second one? Yeah, I plan on. When is it? July 15th. 15th. What time? 10 o'clock. Here. Yes. Yeah. Probably the bathroom. 10 to 12. Is the bathroom say anything? I don't know. Probably. That's where it was. Ask at the front desk, they'll know. Yeah, you, you never know where something's going to be. Check it at the front desk. I guess it depends on the amount of people that show up, too. Yeah. Keep well, it's right there, she might not know. <laughs> but no, it sounds like an excellent program. And of course, and she's looking for more topics, and they mentioned a lot of topics. Yeah. That, you know, from hip surgeries to knee replacements. Things like that, what you could expect. 
recovery, yeah. you know, yeah. blah, blah, that's blah. Nice. Yeah. But heart attacks and strokes because nice. of sudden events, and yep. that's something you really should know yep. in advance yep. what to do. Yep. Yeah. And there were some things I did not know that were amazing to me, Canada. Yeah. She brought out some facts or signs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. She had done one on um, heart attacks and strokes, the difference between those with a man and or a woman. Yeah. Yeah. That was very good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's good having her as part of our team. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Okay, uh, I think that just about ends everything. The announcements. We next council on aging board meeting will be Thursday, September the tenth. Uh, we don't have a meeting in August, so uh, again, if you're unable to attend, please call Joanne. I uh, need a motion to adjourn. Uh, so Barbara and Jim, in that order. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? No one wants to stay. <laughs>